Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge des Nachher-Podcasts vom Nachhaltigkeitsbüro der HU. Heute wieder mit dem neuesten Vortrag aus unserer Ringvorlesungsreihe Der grüne Faden. Viel Spaß beim Zuhören. So, I title this uh, lecture uh, Radical Innovation in a, an effort to combine visions of what is happening around the world, what is happening in different sectors uh, around this idea of transitioning towards sustainable, a sustainable world and uh, how to improve the quality of the discussion about the, those transitions, how to move away from uh, the, the also from the apocalyptic scenarios that are plaguing the, the news and the literature and uh, that are becoming more and more pressing uh, on terms of, of policy. Uh, because, well, and I finish my introduction with that, political campaigns use lots of different narratives around uh, uh, unsustainable practices, uh, about shifting from other kind of uh, processes and then there's we, we can fall easily in the climate uh, panic and and make complex decisions that compromise our ability to uh, react on time if they are not the best so we have to be careful we have to act urgently we have to innovate but still we have to stay calm and think a lot on what are we going to do for the next stage of the world's development, of our country's development. So what I mean by in radical innovation is a way to ask people uh, or to engage people in a discussion about uh, what kind of new practices do we want to uh, put in place for the next few years, what kind of practices in, in terms of individual Uh, behavioral changes, what type of practices in terms of uh, our agreements, uh, institutions, what kind of innovation in terms of our economy, our shifting from a monetary, simplistic uh, way of understanding mm, trade and trade-offs, uh, what kind of innovation in terms of uh, mm, laws, and in, in general terms, how do we envision this Uh, emerging world that perhaps the, the, the youngsters are the most interested in to, uh, being part of. Uh, so there's a, a, a way of putting the idea of innovation as a, uh, a goal for plenty of, of, of hope and not of despair. Uh, the first slide is just to show that uh, we need to improve our capacity of understanding ecosystems and understanding relationships between things uh, because uh, our judgments about sustainability are becoming more and more simpler and more simplified, which is not good at all because ecosystems and society are complex systems that uh, has plenty of different relations throughout, the, throughout scales, scales of time and space. We humans live in a very limited uh, uh, frame of scales and we live in hundreds of meters, uh, kilometers uh, and uh, hundreds of days, perhaps years, not, not more than a hundred years. So we have memories of three generations uh, and we have a kind of a, a reach of uh, space, very limited. So what we need is to learn to think in, at different levels, to integrate this uh, movement of uh, energy, mass, information throughout scales. And this is quite a challenge because uh, education is not always uh, helping us. And the ideas of sustainable development are more fond on the idea of being local. And uh, you have heard and probably you are working in projects that emphasize the idea that becoming local and emphasizing local solutions is the way to go. But everything which is local is embedded in a, uh, in a context, is, uh, in a, is um, um, located in a place which is 
uh, upscales towards the global uh, uh, the global level and in times which has also a different types of projections for the future. So thinking in many scales simultaneously in many scales is one of the skills that we have to try to provide to our students and to our, everybody because simplicity is a challenge. So uh, and, and and then based on the uh, better models, better mindsets about uh, uh, our ecosystems, per perhaps we can now start thinking on things such as um, nature-based solutions, which is another buzzword going around everywhere. People is uh, asking to go back to nature, to uh, learn from nature, to mimic nature. There's plenty of uh, vocabulary uh, calling to behave more in a natural way. But which nature is that? Uh, very little people can say, or they have, a, as I mentioned, a very simplistic idea of what is that nature and which, what is our role in framing nature or creating nature. Because humans during the last 20, 30, 50,000 years have created this, this planet B because we are living in the planet B. Uh, we are now in a planet with totally different uh, conditions in terms of atmosphere, uh, of water, of landscape, and of course, in terms of uh, proportions of living species. We humans are using 70% of, uh, of the basic productivity of the ecosystems. We, are, uh, we have displaced uh, thousands of species and reduced their populations. We have polluted the seas and change the chemical composition of everything. So we are living in a planet B and uh, uh, what, what we call nature today perhaps is not something that we really understand uh, because if we think that nature is the past, we are wrong. We are trying to behave with uh, the, the wrong frame. Uh, nature today is something different. So uh, understanding diversity and thinking on solutions based on the on how ecosystems function is something that perhaps can help us to, um, to, 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 to provide a new perspective to live in the world, to inhabit the world. And here I um, suggest three ways to uh, approach this uh, uh, new sense of living in nature uh, which are needed, uh, but I insist acknowledging that this nature is different. The first one is uh, to shift from unsustainable practices of living in gray infrastructure uh, with um, uh, a call for uh, recovering uh, and uh, unfolding new green infrastructure. So we have to build new nature to uh, foster sustainability but this new nature is something that has to be built and is not, uh, is not uh, located in, in, in nostalgia. Uh, for example, all the Green Deal in Europe and all the nature, Natura 2000 nature, which was the perspective of uh, improving the green quality of landscapes in Europe, but this is a particular idea that has different meanings all around the world, but less gray, more green is kind of what the economy is uh, trying to um, suggest to governments and for policymakers. Secondly, uh, to create a better link in terms of uh, economical rationale between this new nature where we are located. So the green economy to, to mention, which can be more a market system or less a market system or institutional based or less institutional based, but still uh, uh, with the consciousness, with the awareness that the new nature we will and we are already building or with sustainable purposes is an ecosystem where uh, financial flows are very important as Odum uh, in the founding years of ecology mentioned. So money is quite important in this new nature. And finally, and not just to stay with money and markets, uh, how these new natures are built also full of emotional relations, uh, some of guilt, some of despair, some of hope, some of uh, 
uh, with ideas of uh, improved quality of environment, which we don't know what they mean, but plenty of experiments and art. And here is quite important the notion of creating new natures as we do art. Uh, this is also fundamental to the new identities we are building uh, for the next generations. We want to be the same kind of people uh, in this new nature we are building. And that may sound a bit strange, but uh, people is changing as ecosystems are changing and uh, we cannot be or cannot uh, uh, hope to be the same kind of persons or people, even in physical terms, than we were in the past in previous years. So innovation is radical in terms that the world is new. <laughs> it's, as I mentioned, already the planet B, and we are different in, in terms of our um, capacities in, 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 and with a... Uh, integral way of, of saying this word, capacities. There's plenty of different capacities installed in societies, installed on governments, installed on, on, the, on space and time that we can use to foster this new approach for the global uh, nature positive um, perspective that the CBD, the Convention of Biological Diversity, is providing to the countries. So the idea is to, to halt the loss of nature, which is the buzzword. I don't, I hate the word, the use of this word, but uh, let's go for ecosystems and biodiversity. Zero net loss of biodiversity from 2020, two years ago, and really start recovering fast the living world that we used to thrive in. And this is quite important for uh, carbon neutrality, for climate way, w programs, and, and also for bioeconomics, where we are located uh, uh, mostly in Colombia, uh, a path to bioeconomics. So non-net loss and net positive impact for biodiversity is kind of the goal for 2015. And uh, how to achieve it through innovation is the challenge. So what kind of innovation should we look for just technological innovation such as this river of uh, solar cells in California, which get energy and at the same time, they uh, mobilize it towards the cities or is more than just technological innovation. And uh, uh, it has uh, uh, another meaning, uh, if we can say so. So I will like to suggest for the discussion five uh, realms of innovation for the sustainable environmental management in the next future, in the near future, I will say. Uh, and I will start just not because it's the most important, but it's one of, of which I feel in my own experience as very, being very important, which is the body how our bodies have changed during the last years, which kind of bodies do we experience nowadays, which kinds of identities do we build from our bodies and our relations with other bodies and other species, uh, which is quite important. We live from our bodies and uh, that's uh, come, uh, certainly unavoidable, but we can learn uh, different ways of living in, and, and occupying, inhabiting our body. Uh, our relation with machines, uh, all kinds of machines, intelligent machines, more or less intelligent, which have become part of the ecosystem. Uh, they are everywhere. They behave sometimes more with more autonomy than we wish, but uh, they're still doing things, some bad things, some very interesting and good things. And machines are, are already part of our world. Uh, and we are not used to talk with machines, but perhaps with our computers and cell phones when they have uh, bots to help us to do things. But in the next future, we will talk lots with our machines uh, and we even we can migrate uh, temporarily inside the brain of our machines to uh, uh, create the cyborg for, the, for, for different purposes. Then we are 
changing our habitat. We are, are living more and more in cities and cities are quite uh, distant from biological uh, ecosystems uh, or biological ruled ecosystems because cities are governed by our ideas and uh, by our uh, dreams and capacities. So cities are becoming kind of a completely new type of habitat. And we like cities, That's, uh, despite we uh, complain about the hard life in cities, uh, humans live, love to live in cities because many, many uh, reasons. Um, uh, for some people uh, are uh, very difficult to understand, but for others, cities uh, just call us uh, and, and they create totally new types of experience and uh, um, behaviors and, uh, and ways of inhabiting the world. And together, new bodies, new machines, new habitats will probably are the basis for the uh, dreams of inhabiting other planets or special colonies or this new planet we are building with another logic. Uh, this is not necessarily good. But this is something that perhaps it will start to happen uh, uh, very soon. Of course, we have to shift our production systems and we keep innovating in ways of doing things, in ways of producing energy, ways of transforming materials and uh, Perhaps what we understand by innovation is more located here because all the time we are uh, doing new, new, producing new stuff, new substances, uh, um, new entities. Uh, but this is shifting quite fast, especially for uh, adaptation to climate change, of course. And finally, and not least, least, the least important, uh, we are innovating in our forms of, of, of organizing ourselves. So it's social innovation, which means that we are Uh, uh, creating new types of families, new types of relations in in, in our workplaces. Uh, we are uh, again going for a tribal way of living in the streets during summertime. The super botellón. I don't know how to translate it in 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 German or in English, but it's kind of the this this huge. Uh, gatherings of people just to dance and hear music in in, in the in the central uh, in central plats four thousand five fifty thousand people just talking and living for days uh, and protesting but also creating doing arts and and talking about what's going to be the future so organic, uh, ways of living and inhabiting the world also are changing hand in hand with these new kinds of uh, ways of living. Uh, so I will use uh, kind of 10, 15 minutes to talk about some of these uh, transformations because I think the idea of, of transforming the world is uh, substantial. It's, it's very important to understand what we mean by transformation and the dark sides of transformation and the light sides of transformation to avoid thinking that ecological transformations have been all bad in the past, that, that history is a history of destruction of the world uh, but uh, and or it's just a history of victory against nature. It's a mix of both. We have transformed our world Uh, with very different types of outcomes and uh, a, a progressive awareness of the uh, of the size of the task. Never in the past we were uh, eight billion people living uh, unconnected, and so it's quite impossible to compare with anything. So there's no purpose on uh, keeping uh, uh, or, or, or saying that. We are a bad species that uh, has to and that deserves the extinction or deserves catastrophes, uh, or we are a triumphant species that will uh, uh, be eternal and then be and, and have domain about, uh, over nature forever. Uh, we we are in the middle of of, of that and understanding transformations um, in, in a deeper sense, I think it's going to be quite important to uh, build policies and to build 
um, decision making for the future. In fact, the best uh, intergovernmental panel of biodiversity and ecosystem services is calling for an assessment of transformative change, a global assessment, which means what kind of transformations are needed at the global scale, at the national scale, to improve the capacity of biodiversity to deliver ecosystem services or to contribute to the human well-being. So transformation is in the mindset of governments, of entrepreneurships, of uh, communities, saying we have to move, and to move quickly, uh, as and Alice in Wonderland, to move quickly where to? Uh, well, that depends on where you want to, to go. What kind of world do we want? Uh, and of course, we are not in an agreement, but Here we live in bodies that are trained, vaccinated, but not all of them. In, in Europe, we are uh, looking the unfolding of the pandemic and, and, and how ideas about immunity, biological immunity, are uh, having consequences on, on mortality, on uh, the health services, and on the... the on the, the dynamics of the pandemics, which are very different in Eastern Europe than in Russia, than in India, China, United States, and in Colombia, of course, because we are in, in, in a similar situation, but uh, uh, we are not, uh, um, now we are not in the same phase of the pandemics. But uh, of course, vaccination is a big issue about body modification. Uh, who has the right to, uh, ask you to be vaccinated, to be part of the workforce or to be part of uh, anything. Our bodies are also uh, bead and uh, there's a heavy discussion on how to be well fed. You know, there's uh, discussions about the consumption of sugar, consumption of, uh, uh, of, of trans fats, of everything. And there's the idea of orthofitting or the good way of being fed. Um, and here the question is what means to change diets? Uh, do we have to become vegetarians, all of us, to uh, move towards uh, uh, or within a threshold of sustainability or uh, to produce is, or is feasible to produce sustainable uh, meat uh, with regenerative Um, attributes and uh, to help uh, preserving uh, wild ecosystems. So there's always bold positions and uh, the uh, heavy discussion on how to feed those that still uh, live on just one day a meal, uh, which is the real question, how to, to improve the world's capacity to distribute and give access to food. Uh, how do we portray our bodies in art? How do we uh, change gender, change uh, color? How we um, get into connecting with technology? Uh, is this the, the issue of becoming cyborgs and prosthetics? Uh, this will uh, make a huge um, change of, of our say, our biological expressions and our biological way of relating to the world, of inserting ourselves in the world. Uh, how, we, how are we connecting with the world just with, uh, through our senses, our conventional senses, or are we getting into a more complex uh, way of interacting with nature? And, and we are talking about virtual reality, expanded reality, and all sorts of mind uh, technologies that will change our capacity of, uh, of inhabiting the world. Then what kind of new machines I'm referring to? Let me see the timing. Okay, just 10 minutes. So uh, all kinds of, of machines and not the bad machine, the cyborg that will destroy LA in the movie, uh, the robot, the bad robot, but plenty of networks of small machines that are able to perform Uh, ecological tasks that help us to survive in this changing world. So how are we changing those? Or how are we inviting machines to be part in our ecosystems to help us uh, to solve problems? 
of course, we have a huge discussion on what, how are we restoring ecosystems? What kind of, uh, of new green infrastructure are we building with which species? Uh, and if they are more alike to previous existing forests or wetlands, or we are designing those new ecosystems uh, to provide better uh, functions, to provide, to, to protect uh, endangered species. And uh, as we are building cities and expanding our cities uh, everywhere, we are understanding that we may share these spaces with lots of species that are endangered mm -hmm. and the programs such as eco cities and eco urbanism are helping us to open those spaces but still we are we don't want to live together with snakes and spiders and biodiversity biodiversity is a nuisance it's it's uh, dangerous especially here in colombia and uh, it's quite difficult and you may ask liliana how is to live in the choco region uh, and to share the rainforest with thousands of uh, uh, invertebrates and uh, in a condition of climate that makes you think that perhaps the winter in Germany is not as bad as uh, people think. So those new ecologies that we are building are a sign of uh, a wider perspective of the communities that we want to live in. Um, so rules for uh, for this, uh, we'll say this this new world that is emerging, uh, and uh, we don't know how it's gonna uh, evolve. Um, also, uh, change in terms of uh, tackling with poverty, tackling with human rights, tackling with equity, equity, and uh, trying to improve the capacity of everybody to be. Uh, a significant part of the system and to regain a sense of purpose in doing so, which is, I think, one of the most complex diseases to treat in the present, the sense of, uh, of meaning that is being lost by the young, by many people says, I, I don't know what should I do and what is the purpose of my task in the world. And so uh, what probably we will have to uh, work heavily in is into improving the sense of uh, being part of something. It's, it's, it's a sense of being part of, not just of an ecosystem, but a, a, a new type of ecosystem, which is made of machines, people, and other living beings, which are usually I don't, um, I am aware of. So here we may end And I will just finish with this very, <laughs> we'll say, with simple picture about the, say, the new landscapes of the world. This planet B will be will emerge as a assemblage of many types of emerging ecosystems, wild ecosystems from the past that will that still remain, such as the Amazon, for example, or other types of rainforests in the world, part of the ocean, but never thinking that they are completely separated and isolated uh, of the rest of the world because they are also, they are already changed because of what we have done to the atmosphere. So, and I will finish here. Radical innovation is perhaps uh, just a sentence to acknowledge that we need to be aware of the previous changes or the, or, or the changes that are affecting our lives. And uh, through this reflection and awareness, think on the pathways for the future and how are we going to take control of what can be controlled uh, and how we address the collective decisions that need to be taken for sustainable, a more sustainable and just world. Thank you, thank you very much.